Hello everyone, Bo here. So today I wanted to talk about something, uh, well, something that the title will surely indicate. Um, oh boy, it's about Charlie is so cool like coming out as one of the delusional, sexist, uh, disappointing, publicish figures, and a believer in the um, in the harmful trans religion that says if you want to look a certain way and be free to look a certain way. Uh, then you're a woman because his belief system, his religion says certain feelings and looks are exclusive to girls so make anyone who feels them a girl because that's what girl means now that's what girl means under trans ideology woman too um so, a much simpler way of saying all of that is, Charlie, 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 fucking Charlie, Charlie of Charlie is so cool, like fame, came out as trans. It's been upsetting. One might say I've been struggling to cope. Not really, but I've been, um... Th I've been thinking about it since I found out. I found out because I was, um, I think I was on, I forget whose, uh, page, whose, was an Instagram story of maybe Mika Kitty, she's not Mika Kitty anymore, she's Tessa Violet, I think Tessa, like, posted a picture of Charlie as he looks now, and said like congratulations on coming out or something like that and I was like what confused face in real life and I I think I cl oh yeah and it linked to Charlie to to his account which I was which I was following um and I clicked on it and I saw the picture of him and I'm like wait this is Char wait is this <laughs> who is this and then I went back, and I'm like, did I read that right? And then I went back to his page, and I'm like, oh no. Oh dear God, no. And it's not the look, obviously. It's not the look, it's the, the thing he's admitting to, the thing he's sharing with the world, is that he subscribes to this ideology, this sexist ideology, this inherently misogynistic ideology, this toxic harmful backwards ideology that if you uh if you have a certain set of feelings um and you want to express a certain way uh you want to like dress a certain way act a certain way that you are um in a category that english speakers would call girl or woman that th that's what those words should mean. They should be words to describe the types of humans who behave and wish to express in a certain way, which which is just so um, chaotic. It's such a chaotic basis for a definition. It's such a such a such an illogical way to categorize people. You know, the humans who want to dress and look like this, we call them this name, which is. <laughs> It's it's not if that's not better than categorizing people by sex, it's not more helpful at all. Category names should be logical. They should help us organize. They should make sense. They should be helpful. They should be useful. That you know, woman and girl exist to des to describe these groups that are don't have really anything in common except for the wink wink nudge nudge 
implied commonality of being into uh, social femininity, which they'll never really own up to that being the new definition. But that's what their definition of woman and girl mean is uh, people who are into social femininity and uh, people who are into social masculinity. If you're a if you want to if you want to call yourself a man or a boy. And this is just so um, chaotic, regressive, uh, nonsensical. It's not. Uh, it's not a reliable way to 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 distinguish people. It's it's a sexist way to distinguish people. Um, to and it's just. It seems to primarily be a way to allow men who feel sad that they are men. Um, access into the woman category and it's it's really that simple and it's really that um, problematic it's like they want to just open the door for males who don't feel tough enough to have an alternative label for themselves and instead of inventing a new one which would be an issue, but it would be better. Um, but instead of even doing that, you know, third space solutions, uh, they just say, okay, you're lumped into the female category. Makes no sense. Female is a physical state. So those types of humans, female humans, need their own category, their own spaces, their own words, their own human specific terms still need that um, they still go through life in very specific ways they still are vulnerable in very specific ways uh, they still you know just because you dress up a male person you know in a dress and a new label that doesn't take away the ways that they make female people vulnerable and the harm they cause to female people like trans identifying males who others would call trans women they are still very much a threat to women and girls like that doesn't go away just because they identify as a woman or a girl so there's really no logical basis to say oh you this male says he's a, a woman he, he goes by that so now you get to go in this in the, in the group with women and we have to pretend like we never understood why women and girls needed their own spaces away from your sex um, and third third space is not an option so I don't know how Charlie feels about all of this I, I'm, I would assume he's one of those let me in <laughs> he's one of those let me in motherfuckers who's like let me in I'm one of you let me in which is also weird because so Charlie is someone I followed. He was like he's YouTube legends. He's OG YouTuber. He's like he's like one of the first people, if not the first person I remember watching with real regularity. Like, oh my god, Charlie's uploaded type of excitement and like um uh it was like it was like him, Vlog Brothers Oh my gosh, the old days of YouTube, my gosh. And it's just like, he's like, I feel like I know him, and it's the weirdest feeling, it's so surreal. But um, I obviously I don't, obviously I, I never did know of him, obviously, as all the fans of him do, and know him as much as you can maybe know a person without uh, actually knowing them, without having met them. And so this is like very, it uh, shocked me, it surprised me, it made me uh, sad because of what it is. Like, it would be a little surprising if he came out as like gay, but that, that would be just, you know, celebratory. It would be like, whoa, really? And then yay. <laughs> but this is like, the, the problem, this is, this is, this stirs up negative feelings because of what it is. It's a negative thing. Like, cause I, like I've been trying to figure out how I feel. It's like, 
weird but it's not just weird because it's surprising it's weird because it's bad it's weird because I feel like I know him and it's like and it's weird just in general probably like I feel like even maybe if I were a believer I'd be like whoa Charlie's one yeah he still goes by Charlie by the way he doesn't he doesn't want to change that name which I appreciate it makes it easier to refer to him uh he did it for me and it's so weird because it's like now like I can't help but hear myself through them through their ears and I know it's like the, just the whole thing with being on the left is how everything you say everything you say can and will be used against you everything we believe that or that lefties tend to believe it can and will be used against you at some point to defend trans ideology so it's like, I don't know, I, like, for other things, like, if, like, because for other things, like, go, go going back to, like, coming out as gay, it's like, if, if I were saying, it's so weird for me that this person is gay, someone would be right to say to me, or, you know, yeah, say to me, respond to me and say, well, it's not about you. Like, this is his journey. Like, remove yourself from it. Who cares how you feel? Like, shut up. And it's like, oh, so they'll, like, the trans ideology people, they'll say that to me. Because it's like, yes, that fits for someone who is coming out as gay. It does not fit for this. Because actually, uh, when, I and I know he, again, he hasn't said all his feels specific allegiances specific because there are uh trans identifying people who don't believe who do believe in third spaces and stuff but so but when someone like charlie or anyone well but particularly someone like charlie comes out as trans identifying they are contributing to the um usually the destruction of rights for women and girls so like it does affect me and it affects the whole movement for women and girls globally it per, it, it affects uh n the normalization levels of misogyny on the left because now here's one more person with a lot of fans to for people to feel emotionally connected to and like now they'll think of charlie when they get all vicious and vile to women and girls no, you know, never mind that girl from, like, um, who is a believer, it sounds like, in trans ideology, who, like, went to Primark, she went viral a couple of weeks ago, um, because she went to Primark and to, and they're, they're, they just, to be safe, they changed all their j dressing rooms to unisex dressing rooms, so there's no space for just girls and women, and, uh, two boys, men, deliberately, like, went and looked at her, and thankfully, in those, in those two instances, she wasn't in a state of undress, but she was very shaken, and she, like, she, like, assured, though, she assured, as now women are getting conditioned to be nice in new horrifying ways, she was like, I support it, like, you know, I'm, I don't, uh, you know, I, I, oh my god, she said something like, I think it's so great that everyone feel included. But, and like, I'm paraphrasing now, it's, but then she's like concluding with, but I don't feel included, or but I'm gonna like exclude myself because I don't feel safe because, you know, men can basically walk into where I'm changing. And like, like, why, like, guys do everything to get to girls. Guys do every crazy thing you could ever imagine to get to just see a girl. Guys invented Google images to see Janet, uh, I was say Janet Reno. Janet Jackson's bare boob um, from the Super Bowl halftime show however many years ago. Guys invented... Was Oh, wait. No, no, no. Was that YouTube? One of them. I, now I mix them up. One, like, YouTube... I, I think Google Images... I don't remember now. I'm, like, mixing up the origins. But one of these... Either, it was either Google Images... Or no, it was either Janet Jackson's boob or um, Jennifer Lopez in her dress, the green dress where you could like see her back and the shape of her butt, I guess. 
um, her sexy figure, um, it inspired tech bros of the time to create Google Images, and then Jennifer, or Jennifer, Janet Jackson, I think, maybe was the one who inspired YouTube? That seems, I think it's true, though, I think people, I think YouTube was inspired by, like, that, by the Super Bowl event with Janet Jackson. So it's like, the, all that to say, I conflated some stuff, but, um, you get me, like, guys will do a lot of, will do anything, will do everything to see naked woman, to see naked girl, guys will do any, they'll say lies, they'll be crazy, <laughs> they'll do the craziest shit, so acting like, oh, what kind of guy would do that, um, a predatory one, the guys we've been having on our planet, sharing air with, for the last uh, thousand plus years, you know, the, the, the same guys that have always been here, they've always been this way, they have not changed, they're not being socialized in better ways, like they're worse, if anything, they're worse, so like, yeah, of course they will lie, of course they will, they'll do everything, and now there's no barrier of protection for women and girls from that kind of guy. Now, and like, and that, someone said this on Twitter the other day, and I was like, that is so true, and I, of course, I can't speak for all women, but it's like, I don't know, if like, I woke up and I was male, like, if like, one in like, ten million humans, like, had this thing where in their deepest REM cycle of sleep, there was this, um, affliction that, um, happened to people, one in ten million people, where they, they, they like, auto desexualized I don't know what you would call it auto they like they like in their sleep they turned into the opposite sex so like there's something like that in our world somehow that's possible for our species rare but it happens and I you know like woke up was fully male sore as hell let's say that's a side effect I don't know I'm trying to make it make sense this is obviously not possible at all but let's say that's a thing. I'm bigger, I'm burlier, I'm wide-shouldered, maybe even taller. It's like crazy, this thing that happens, but it happens. So you know what I'm not going to do? So Because I had to like create a, a, like, a basis for it being a thing. So I'm not like... Because like, if this happened, for real, I would be like terrified. Like, what is this? Like, I would be too focused on figuring out what I've done wrong, am I a witch, did a witch curse me, but so like let's say this is a medical thing, it's rare but it happens so there's a, so I'm not like wondering, so once that's out of the way and like oh I'm one of the, the ten, the one in ten million, right, okay, so I'm a male now, you know what I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna make my sisters uncomfortable, I'm not gonna go in their bathrooms, I'm not gonna go in their changing rooms, because I would care, and it's not just because, like, I, I think if this whole, like, if, if you had asked me this, like, ten years ago, when this wasn't even, like, on my mind, this is not just to, this, like, this is not my opinion just to prove a point, like, I really, honestly, would not want to make, like, I would know, oh, now I've got all these physical advantages, and now I've got, um, this, this look that of obviously for very understandable reasons having lived as a girl I know why you would be afraid of me you don't know what's in my head why would you like this and like I know this is about me because I empathize even with like like I this is okay but like I empathize even a little bit with like store shop uh owners who like eye me a little suspiciously when or would when I was like a teenager coming with my friends Cause it's like, I'm like, I know I'm good and wouldn't steal, but they don't know that. I just, I'm a random person to them. And like, this is a store shop I've never been in. I would like, kids steal. Like, I've seen kids come into this shop and steal and run out or just do it subtly and get away with it. So it's like, why would this person know I'm different from them? They're not a mind reader. So you do, like, I, it made me, like, this is a realization I had, like, in high school. And it made me think, like okay, I'm gonna, like, try to carry myself a certain way, I mean, still they're not a mind reader, and this is not me, like, being, like, on the side of authority and, like, how they assume things, like, uh, that get people killed, 
you know, where they're the killers, like cops, who are like, well, you look like one of the bad ones, so I shot first and decided to ask questions later. I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying, it, for that specific situation, I, like, as a kid, I like, a teenager, I was like, oh, I get it. Like, they, why would they think I'm different from her? Like, we look like, we just look like the same kind of school kids, and this one stole, and I could easily be a thief. So... Same kind of thing, same logic, so I, I know, like, I just look like a man to these women, to these girls, so why would I ever try to make my sisters, former sisters, but in my head and heart, sisters, uncomfortable, I would, like, I would never pull a Leah, a Leah uh, Thomas, for example, I would never, like, try to compete with my sisters, like, oh, I've got this male body, now I'm gonna go in your sport and co compete against you in swimming or anything, so I feel like that even, just that, the, the, like, audacity to do that is very male. Like, that lack of concern, that lack of sisterhood is, is very male. Um, anyway, anyway, this is a little off topic, but connected. Um, but so back to Charles. <laughs> back to Charlie. Uh, disappointed. I'm just disappointed. I'm like sad for him like he was he was such a likable guy and he still is in my memories he's a likable guy I don't know anything about his beliefs I'm trying not to assume the worst but I can't help it I can't help assume the worst that he believes in just the worst versions of this he's probably the JK Rowling hater that maybe that's not fair to assume but he probably is like he probably is if this is if he fell into this he probably fell into all the other shit that usually comes with this. <sighs> so it's so sad. It's so sad. Even if I didn't know him, it would be sad. Or even if he, it was just one of those uh, satellite people who I knew of at the time but wasn't a fan of um, for from the old days of YouTube. Like who? I can't think of anyone. Maybe Fluffy Talks? But I was kind of a fan of him. Anyway, I would... <laughs> It's even if I didn't, even if I weren't a fan, it would still be like, wow, and it would still be sad, cause oh my gosh, you got sucked in by the gender cult, Charlie. What the hell? Like you seem smart, you seem sensible. How can, in the like privacy of your mind, how can you think that you are a woman? How can you really think that you are another one down? Um. So, yeah, I mean, these are just my thoughts. <laughs> Clearly very scattered. Um, I did tweet about it. I, uh, the, I guess, I think the day after I found out, I tweeted about it. I'll post that up there just to, and so I've been sitting with this for a couple of days now because it's bad. It's bad when a public figure, even though he's not in the spotlight anymore, but he could easily, he'll, probably come back now this white male now gets to say he is the most oppressed group he gets I mean it's like like that is bad but it's not the worst part it's the worst part is the message that he sends to his fan base to his former fan base to his new fan base to any randoms who come by He's telling them, he's spreading this sexist ideology that uh, a boy feeling unmanly means he's a girl, essentially. Like, I'll say it for you since they'll never admit what it really is. That's what it is. A boy feels unmanly. A boy feels unboyish. So you're a, you're a girl or a woman then. That's, that's, what, that's what they believe in. And it, I mean, tell me, tell me how that's not backwards and sexist and regressive. It's, I don't know, it's so disappointing. I just, gosh, they got Charlie. They got Charlie. You bastards. You got Charlie. How? Oh, what powerful stuff is this? I mean, he was, I, he leaned into boyishness. He was not a GNC, well, he wasn't really a GNC uh, a entertaining kind of guy, was he? So that doesn't help. I feel like it might be 
worse when you're like hardcore and you're boy 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 I only wear these colors I only have this hair although his hair was kind of it was floppy but it wasn't long long like it's long now ish short long um but like why is that coming with it so like, I don't know would would he say like my hair is longer than it's ever been because I want people to correctly gender me or are you saying or, or did you do this because you feel like this hair is part of the uniform of girl and you like it and you want to wear it and you never felt like you could wear it this long before I don't know I wonder about that I wonder about that because that's like part of it there's always like not like every short haired girl I see I just assume she identifies as they them and like nine times out of ten I'm right because now there's like uniforms for these labels Ugh. there thankfully are still GNC people out here long-haired boys short-haired girls who know their girls long-haired boys who know their boys and you know men and and women too um 2022 is wild I mean this is not the most wild thing that's happened in 2022 um now that'll be the bombs that uh Putin drops on I don't know America maybe England will get a few of those That'll be wild. That'll rock everyone's shit. Um, random thing. I don't know if this is truly... It seems so absurd. that. It, but, like, I just read this today that Biden... The Biden administration is saying that people born male, even if they identify as trans women, so trans women still have to uh, enroll in selective, ser uh, in selective service. So for the draft, basically, which so part of me is like, oh, wow, you you're acknowledging this then you're acknowledging. How are you going to explain this if you're acknowledging that me men are still men, even if they identify as women? That's what you're saying here. And they have all those physical advantages that make them better fit soldiers phys uh, for physical combat. So that is um one part but more than that this is going to be off topic for a minute this really kind of scared me because i mean B biden already a few days ago said like um he like just was very honest which is kind of rare for a president and said uh the threat of nuclear war is uh real it's the highest it's ever been he said something to that effect so that was scary and then this like just making it clear for everyone uh we might have to like that's part of what this message is is we might have to institute a draft and so that's terrifying so like almost like forget the news of he is acknowledging males are men even yeah so that's that's like a little like momentary distracted gotcha but like oh my god He's also telling us, like, we're, like, concerned that we're going to have to start drafting folks, men, boys, as he's made clear, actually. I, I uh, Horrifying. Horrifying. This is horrifying. And then, and like, that, like, I can't help but think of that, like, this very real problem. And I, just, and I get so angry because, like, this is all, like, I can't help blaming men. Like, this is all men's fault. They're always warring with each other. And, and then I'm more mad about how, like, so this real fucked up thing is happening. War is happening. War is happening. War is happening. Russia, Putin has, has started a war. Um, wh whether Ukraine will be able to finish it, who knows? But he has started a war. That's actually the fact of the matter. It's you thought oh all those months of like uh where nothing seemed to be happening really. Oh war can kick up at any moment. And when you have like this rival rivalry, this hatred for the West, you're 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 an enemy. You're an enemy to this crazy man. And so it's like men on men violence, it's men directing men, men following a man. And I'm just so angry and like, instead of all this time talking about that and focusing on that, 
humiliating him, attacking him the way we should. It was like, who was getting that kind of attention? It was Amber Heard, still is. It's uh, Meghan Markle, still is. Still very much is Meghan Markle. And it's just like, I like, I just for a minute, I'm just a hardcore misandrist. Because it's like, this, you're focusing on this shit. Like, Meghan is her, she's the threat to the world, to the nation, for what? Because she's in, in California, and this, this crazy-ass man is doing real damage, and this is, you don't want to talk about that, though, to your ginormous audience? This is not the body language you want to decipher? This is not the one you want to drag and humiliate to let him know, you know, we don't respect him? No, Amber Heard is who you want to use for that, because she's the real threat. She, 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 she upset your favorite drunken, uh crackhead pirate and that's the real threat when women are loud and disobedient not this crazy ass motherfucker in russia who is about to has already actually sort of started world war three i mean if world war world war three happens that 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 fighting in march is actually when it started really when he invaded in march i think it was march so but all then on all that time all these people with platforms, overwhelmingly, it's Manosphere people, it's uh, Red Pill people, they're focusing on women, how women need to be better, um, more obedient, more subservient, Amber Heard is evil, Meghan Markle's evil, J Jada Pinkett Smith, these, these evil women are so evil somehow, because disobedient, because annoying, but this motherfucker in Russia, who's actually killing people and flattening Ukraine, He's just a silly boy doing silly boy things, right? That's not who you want to focus on. Let's focus on these evil women doing basically nothing. So, like, it really upsets me because it's part of, like, it is, you know, it sounds maybe like nothing, but it's huge, actually. It's huge. Like, our world has its priorities really fucked up, and that's kind of why this happens. Is because people, the people aren't checking the real threat. They're busy calling women the most extreme forms of bad, evil, but they're not calling an actually evil man evil. That, like, that's how strong misogyny is, and I said it, I tweeted this the other day, I feel like misogyny is going to be the downfall of mankind, because people are so distracted by bullshit, they're distracted by women, they're distracted and they enjoy, like, witch hunts that um, focus on women that are just completely illogical and disproportionate to the woman, the targeted woman's crime. Meanwhile, there are men doing actual crimes, heinous crimes, actual evil crimes, and they don't get even like one, one millionth, <laughs> maybe that's extreme, they, they don't get a fraction of the coverage or attention that a they deserve and b that women who are basically harmless get like Meghan Markle is not a threat to humankind people neither is Amber Heard or Jada Pinkett Smith you stupid fuckers I'm so angry okay all right this is not what this video is about but yes so Charlie um because that's a little part of it, too, is, like, the left has been so consumed with getting males, men, into women's spaces that they, like, let... I, I don't know if it feels connected to how Roe v. Wade was overturned. Like, our eye was not on the ball because of this conversation with... with uh, uh, concerning trans-identified males and centering them in like all conversations and constant technically infighting even though I think they would not consider us one of them I'm still a lefty it doesn't really matter what they consider me so it's like technically infighting when lefties on this side are saying males deserve to go anywhere and everywhere and lefties on my side are saying no they need to like female people still need spaces and we're fighting over something that is so, like, obvious, like, the the solution is obvious, the need, women's, women and girls' needs is so obvious, and we're fighting over this stupid thing, 
and then this real stuff, this real, this like really bad stuff is happening and we're like, I don't know, we're not, our, our attention is way too divided from our POV, or maybe I'll just be specific here, from my POV, it's like these sexist backwards people who think they're the good guys, mind you, very strongly they believe that, um, they feel like effeminate Charlie should be put into the category of adult human female because he requested it, basically. Because he he placed himself there. Because he said it with his mouth. He, not, not even with his mouth. He wrote it in an Instagram post in words. A man says, I'm a woman. And now we're arguing to the death about, is that a fact or no? We say no. He needs his own space. And y'all are like, no, we he's, he's one of you because he said it in words. And we're going to honor that over anything you wish, you stupid bitch. And so this is where we are. Very distracted. And quite frankly, very stupid. Because now him being an adult, human male, somehow doesn't matter. And I know it's Charlie, and like I would have bet stupid money on Charlie being a good guy. Because he seemed like such a good guy. He was like the only one in that like... <laughs> In, I mean, it was like the first Me Too movement. It was the Me Too movement before the the big mainstream Me Too movement. There was like a Me Too movement on YouTube where we all, all the fandom of, of well, nerd fighter fandom mostly it seemed, found out that like a fuck ton of the guys, because <laughs> like, look at this. Look at the pattern, even the good guys, even the lefty bros. A bunch of them were like predators, were like, Fucking underage fans, raping underage fans, uh, coercing underage fans, and, and same age fans into sex. Because, you know, males be like, and were any women in that? Were any women me too? Did any, did anyone say, oh, Christina Horner, she, she coerced me into, no, no, the five awesome girls were not in any of that mess. None of the women of the, like, I don't know what to call that, what were we, nerd fighters, I guess. None of the nerd fighter people, none of the female nerd fighter people or ad uh, adjacent fandoms of nerd fighters were ever caught up in that mess except as victims of dudes who were caught up in that mess. It was overwhelmingly guy or not overwhelmingly, it was 100% guys and their victims were almost exclusively women. That's where it varied. They're like Tom Milsom, he had a f like a couple of male victims too. Oh my god, Tom Milsom was such a fucking creep. His thing was... I don't want to compare, but I, he, I feel like his was the worst. God, it was so bad. Um, So they did all that. We So we had our Me Too movement, you know, before the Me Too movement, where one person called out. I don't remember who got called out first. Then all these girls, and I get that. I understand why that happens. It happens with, like, everything. It's like... Because it was such a, like, wholesome thing. Nerd Fighter, the Nerd Fighter sector of YouTube was so wholesome and, like, happy and good vibes. And I can imagine if you're a girl who got coerced by one of these pieces of shit guys, who are especially guys of standing in the community, you wouldn't want to say anything because you're like, did that just happen? Like, is a Alex Day is a piece of shit? Did he just, like call me into sex and then like discard me basically like and I felt pressured to do it because I didn't want to disappoint him like did all of that just happen and like okay I'm not gonna tell anyone because everyone likes him and all these guys are likable then you hear someone you know share their story and like holy shit he did it to you too and he's like uh this one did this to me and this one did this to me and of yeah I get that I get the psychology of that why you I get why you don't say anything. I wish we were all so brave and bold that we did. But I, under, I fully understand why women and men don't, if when they're victimized, and boys more often, but men too, don't say anything. Because it's like, part of you don't want to ruin the vibes. You feel like you'd be ruining the vibes. So, like, whoever spoke up first, 
bravo, like bravo, because you're brave, um, and I don't remember who it was, but yeah, so one person spoke up, and then a bunch of other people spoke up, and they're like, yeah, this one did this to me, and this one did this to me, and it was like a whole big shock and revelation that a lot of these guys are actually scummy, and they're all guys, and they're very scummy, and Charlie was one of the few, se seemingly few, who did not, who was not one of the scummy guys. He, like, made a video about consent about it, and, and he was like, chill, it, it ruined the vibes forever, though, it really did. Every, nothing was ever the same. Uh, but, I mean, Vlogbrothers are still doing their thing. But, yeah, so, Charlie was one of the good ones, and, I mean, he's still, I, I, like, that's, like, the thing, because there are good guys, there are good guys who identify as trans, I will say even that, who, like, on a personal level, I would be, like, just, you know, empathy, have in person, I would feel like, oh, I don't, I would feel s scared for, um, perhaps a cat black to go into a men's restroom, so that's why I say the third space is necessary for people who can absolutely cannot be dissuaded from transitioning. It's like, I need this. I need this to live. You can, you couldn't, there's no amount of therapy that would make me think keeping my body as it is and just, you know, being GNC is enough. Okay. They need a third space then. They can't, they, women and girls still need a separate space because bad trans identified males exist and they will do what they do. They'll do just what, what you would call cis men would do. They're just as dangerous as cis men. And reports say, like, there's actually a higher rate of, like, sexual deviancy, which is really not surprising um, when you think about how AGP can be, like, easily mixed up with that. Um, but, yeah, they, uh, so you know, women and girls still need a space. They still need a separate space. So, um, what was I saying? I, I, I just, I guess, let me work backwards. I was saying I could feel empathy for the good ones. For I, I even feel empathy before this was a thing. I would always feel a little, well, not, but like when I thought about in this one very specific situation with a gay friend who was kind of GNC, I was like nervous for even him to go into a men's restroom. And it's like, almost was like, I'll cover you, come into ours, I'll be there, like, individually, I can, I can feel that, I can feel that urge to protect someone who you know is decent, but that can't just be the way it is, I mean, apparently it is, but it's, it's just not fair, it's not, it's not, you know, girls still need a space, girls and women still need a space, like, Anyway, um, so, I don't know what I was saying. I guess Charlie was one of the good ones who didn't get wrapped up in that, as far as we know. He was never accused of anything. So, yeah, and so, I don't know. I don't know. I, like, I guess the thing I'm working through mo more, more than anything is, like, I'm mad at him. <laughs> I'm mad at him. I'm mad that he fell under this gender cult spell, and I still have those feelings of fondness for him, though, and those are, like, in battle a little bit, but more than anything, I'm d extremely disappointed, so I'd, I'd love uh, to ask him a million questions, like, why, and how dare you, no, I'm kidding, sort of, I'm not kidding, um, I think I'm coping with humor a little. It's not funny. It's like, when I think about it, it's like so bordering on tragic. Like, I know, have some perspective. But it, it is because, like, it's it's bad. It's bad when a when a man uh, feels like he, he's not a man because he feels this way. Like, that's not what man means. That's not what man is supposed to mean. It, this is sad. It's tragic when you feel like your body is wrong. That's sad. Like, that's sad. And then everything tied to it is sad. Women and girls not being allowed words. 
and categories just for them is 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 sad it's sad that women and girls not being allowed separate categories and spaces in even sports in even prisons is seen as necessary to accommodate sexist men presumably like Charlie and you know even though a tiny fangirl part of me is still saying just be kind it's freaking Charlie it's Charlie McDonald Charlie is so cool like he wrote a song about acne <laughs> oh memories um what was I saying <laughs> So like, even though part of me is like still like fangirl who just wants to be supportive, I am personally never going to acknowledge Charlie as a woman. I'm not doing that for anyone anymore, not even Charlie. I am not a believer in this sexist religion. I think female people deserve human names human category names whatever names we have or get stripped of I'm not going to pretend that Charlie and um, let's say Dodie Dodie Clark are the same sex because Charlie says so and Dodie and many like her accept that absurdity because the alternative feels too mean I'm also not going to pretend that Charlie wanting to perform his version of the same gender role, aka the same uh, sex stereotypes demanded and expected of Dodie and most others of her sex, makes Charlie and Dodie and women the same. A man wanting to perform female stereotypes, even a cool man who I have a bias towards who is part of my childhood, isn't a woman. I, I support Charlie's look and his likely, very likely new fashion choices, because that always comes with it, because he couldn't dress like that as a man, I guess, right? I mean, I, I understand why the pressure is high, but I support his look, like however he wants to style his hair, however he wants to express, however he wants to talk, whoever he wants to chase. I wonder if he's still attracted to women. He probably is, right? So now he's like one of those male lesbians, right? That's going to piss me off. God. So, you know, I express however he wants to look, however he wants to talk, however he wants to present, and his very likely new fashion choices, right? Because he couldn't dress in the dress he wanted as a boy or whatever. As a boy, right? He has to, now, if he's, if he's donning that garb, he has to call himself a girl. And this is progress, people. Okay. Uh, but, you know, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I, I, I support his style of dress, his style of expression, uh, his individual style of, I don't know, uh, jewelry wearing, whatever. That's all under uh, expression. But it doesn't make him any less of a male human. So it doesn't make him any less of a man, because he's fully a man. He's 32, I believe. So I, I, no, no, Charlie, not even you. No, you're not a woman. That's not me being mean. That's not me being stubborn. That's not me, I don't know how you rationalize it, how, I don't know how you think. I don't, I, I don't, um, you now, I mean like a more proverbial you, you as in, uh, all the trans identifying people because I think you have to vilify us to make us these evil little turfs I don't know what that means in your head. I am just a person who is obs observing reality here You are not a woman because woman is an adult human female. You are not an adult human female You are an adult human male. So you are a man. That's what that word means. It's not an insult It's not undermining you or your humanity. It's just what you are that's what it means and I don't agree with your sexist definition of what man and woman mean I'm not I'm not gonna ever agree with that your your interests your expression it if it's 
falls under effeminate or social femininity, even on hormones, it makes you no less of a man, even if that's what you want. Now there's a part of me that just wants to go into like all of the <laughs> all of the red flags. Like there aren't very many. Uh, just really one, because Charlie was always my go-to example of a good guy who even good, I would always say in, in arguments, not argument, well in discussions about male versus female, uh, like entitlement or like male versus female confidence, I would always use him, use him as an example where even like good guys have this like confidence that just seems to be a norm in men, a lot of men, not all obviously. Well, I don't know, because <laughs> they, like, there's the joke that's rooted in truth, like, if there's one thing men have, it's audacity, and it's, like, he was my go-to, and it was, like, he was my good guy example, though, of, like, what women can maybe try to do to, like, you know, sometimes you gotta have some audacity, let me say what I'm talking about, which is just how, this is so, okay, so, some years ago, Charlie made a book, called fun science something I think it was called fun science and when he did that I was like what I was like fangirl of this guy but I was like that's weird like you're not as like a scholar of sciences you're not a scientist you're not an expert in any sense and you read a book I don't know why it just felt like because I was, I guess I was comparing it to me. I was like, I would never do that. That feels so, like, inappropriate. I don't know why. Maybe, and like, I would, because he's such a nice guy. So I'm like, well, you know what? Maybe you need to get a little bit of Charlie's chutzpah. Maybe all women do. Because it's kind of, there's a pattern of this. Where girls and women are like, uh, you know, like, more afraid to, like, do shit. Like, they'll, like... There's that meme that went around, and it's, like, rooted in truth again. Like, where a woman will have, like, eight out of the ten requirements for a job and feel like, ugh, I don't, I don't have them all. And then a man will have, like, two out of ten and be like, I got this. And it's like, there's truth in that. Guys are just, like, they'll just go for it more often and, like, not care. And they'll be like, I'll charm my way in. I have enough. I've got world experience. So I'll, I'll figure it out. They're more likely to do that, and women are more likely to, like... And, of course, there are exceptions, so, so many exceptions to, you know, these male-female ar archetypes. Um, got archetypes on the brain. Uh, Megan's podcast is coming out today. Um, <laughs> I listened to that. I listened to Megan Markle's podcast. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, so, what is my point? Uh, I just, yeah, that was always, like, a, a a reference when we would be having these discussions. I would be like, yeah, like, Charlie, of Charlie is so cool, like, he, like, made a book about science, and I was like, what? You're not a scientist, what are you doing? And, anyway, um, so, I don't know, stereo stereotype-wise, that was very male of him. So, I, that's, like, the closest thing to, like, oh, he's got that trans-identified male audacity to just come in your face, that sounds, but to just get in your face and be like, uh, I, I, I am one of you. Accept me, bitch. Although I've never heard Charlie curse. Well, no, I did. I feel like that was, I feel like in a blog TV going way back, I feel like someone like asked him to curse because we had never heard him curse and then he did. I, maybe, yeah, so, I don't, there's none of this matters, <sighs> all that's dead, isn't that crazy, this, all of that might as well have never happened, it's like, just such distant memories, like, Charlie's identifying as a woman now, it's a very distant memory, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I obviously don't want Charlie to go out here feeling depressed, and, and, like, I don't know, I don't, I, I, what I care about most is, is the safety of women and girls, because that's, like, the thing that even before this was a thing, it has been overlooked, has been ignored, the ways girls are vulnerable, like, down to, like, how harmful misogynistic, uh, slurs are, like, you're not gonna tell me that men who've killed women 
didn't think of them as these dehumanized uh, creatures that w would be called like or likened to like bitch and cunt and whore and hoe. And there's a whole thing of like women who are sex workers when they're killed, like people don't care because it's like, oh, it was just a whore. Like that's a that's a very real way women are perceived. And like, so all these slurs, they're like extremely harmful, but the ones for women are the ones that nobody gives a shit about. Lefties use them, right wingers of course use them. And like we, we got, people, people took spaz seriously, or I should say ableist language seriously before anti-woman misogynistic slurs were taken seriously. Like, what does that tell you about women's status? in the subconscious of the masses like it's like it's it, like people are offended that I whenever this even comes up of me even saying you shouldn't use misogynistic slurs they get upset because it's so normal for them misogyny is so normal for them that they're like what like bitch you're not gonna stop me like only with women only with women do people get away with this and so it's bad. It's bad. I mean, finally, Iranian women are fighting. Like, that's been something I've been a champion of for years now, for, since I was a kid. That, like, that was my initiation into feminism, was learning about how things are in Iran and Saudi Arabia. But that's, that's not what this video is for. Uh, so, like, I mean, I, like, I thought, the reason it's kind of relevant is just because I thought they would never fight back, and I don't know if they'll be victorious, but I just thought Iran, Iranian women will never, like, they're so under the thumb, it is so dangerous for them, but you know who's doing it is like Gen Z, so for all my annoyances <clears throat> with Gen Z, primarily the people fighting are Gen Z in Iran right now, and overwhelmingly it's women, it's girls, it's girls, and like that is brave or be that's beyond brave that's I don't so I don't know like I felt hopeless about that situation I felt like in some places misogyny is just gonna reign forever like look at how extreme it is in some parts of the world and Iranian women Iranian girls and men boys too are actually fighting which is and again they may not be victorious they did something like this apparently in like um 2009 and they were squashed but they, people are saying this feels different. I hope it's different. I hope the outcome is different. Anyway, uh, what am I saying? Just, I don't know, misogyny is universal. It's everywhere. Men are like, they. I'm sorry. Like, what, and I'm, like I, why am I even sorry? But like, men have this pattern of just like, they're not happy until women are under their thumb. I, I, it's like too many of them have this thing in their fucking head where they're like, I gotta be better than her. I need her to know she's my inferior and she has to listen to me and I'm the boss of her. Like, that's like a global thing. Uh, and it's not, it's not, it's not absent of the left. There are a lot of lefty bros who have, like, that mindset too. Very, very much they do. That's why this, that's why this trans ideology thing has been so successful. Uh, yeah. Be who you are, Charlie, but you're not a woman. You're a man, a GNC man, who I would support as a GNC man. Never as a woman, because you're not a woman. You don't belong in women's spaces. Even for someone I like, who I've never met, I can't stress that enough. Uh, I, no, 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 not even you, no. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for listening. Like, share, subscribe, etc. Bye.